Well, hello, beautiful people. Welcome back. So for today's video, we are going to be sitting down and doing a makeup fails video. And as the name would suggest, we're just going to be talking about makeup I've tested, makeup I've tried, and uh, that it failed and why it failed, what I don't like about it, and just kind of giving you a brief, you know, little rundown, little 411 on those products. And this is a video that I've done before, roughly, I want to say a month or two ago. I'll link it up here. And uh, in that video, you guys mentioned, like in the comments, that you would actually love to see more of these, that they're super helpful. So I am going to start trying to incorporate these more, again, based on your guys' request um, because these videos are really helpful. I think that for me, a fail video is just as helpful as a favorites video. It's just as helpful as, you know, anything that's to the positive. I think stuff like this can also be good because it's not just about, you know, beating up one brand or beating up a product. It's it's more so about just always conveying to you like what my favorites are or in this case, what my least favorites are. That way, no matter what, we know we're always buying the good stuff. You know, I just I just want to keep the money funneled to where it's really good and, and, and you know, what, what I think is worth it personally. Of course, with that being said, I I'm going to give you guys kind of my little disclaimer right up front. I know everybody says it, but you'd be amazed, okay? You would be amazed the comments if you don't. Um, so I'm just going to say right, right up front, if you guys love something I talk about and I hate it or vice versa, of course, that is completely fine. Um, I have no doubt, and I know it's happened in the past where I talk about things that I can't stand for one reason or another, and you guys love them. And I think that that's great, and it's really good feedback, actually, for um, you guys to be able to talk about in the comments and kind of have conversations, because a lot of times that's just because of, like, personal preference or, to, you know, skin type or how you wear your makeup. Do you set it? Do you not? Do you like a hydrated look? Do you like a matte look? Things like that. And so I think going into videos like this, you know, it's important to put that up front that if you love it and you use it, absolutely keep doing that because there's there's no reason for you to throw it away just because I don't like it. Like that, that doesn't make any sense. So just make sure going into any video like this, whether it's mine or somebody else's, that uh, you're just using it as a rough guide. You know, you can talk about or you can, you can hear my reasons for loving and or hating something and kind of apply that to how you do your makeup up your personal preference and kind of go from there. Of course, with all of that said at the start of the video, before we get into the little box of goodies here, I do want to stop and introduce myself for anybody that might be new. My name is Paige. This is Seeking Alexandria. Welcome to the channel. Again, if you are new here, I do put up three new videos a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, right around 7, 7.30-ish a.m. my time here in good old northern Michigan. And then also in addition to that, if you haven't done so yet, I would greatly, greatly appreciate it if you would take a second and go down in the description box and follow me over on Instagram. I am trying to hit 10,000 followers over there so I can get the swipe up feature in my Insta stories. But I've also been putting a ton of work into my Instagram um, just in terms of content. I've really, you know, revamped it a lot. So we have makeup IGTVs, makeup reels, makeup, um, little mini makeup reviews, plus size fashion, you know, artsy stuff, portrait style, and, you know, just a lot of that stuff in the feed. And then, of course, in the Insta stories, like the day-to-day, -day, that this part hasn't changed. I still love to hang out with you guys. We do a lot of unboxings. We talk day-to-day -day in the office. And it's really just kind of the fun, like, behind the scenes scenes of the channel. It's where you guys, you know, see everything first. You see the products that I'm going to be testing. You do the polls and I ask you questions. And it's just more of like the fun little tight knit group of people over there that, you know, I just get to converse with more. But anyways, the moral of the story here is that if you're into me, my personality, and you want to get to have a little bit more of it, you want to just see the behind the scenes, definitely check out my Instagram. Again, everything is linked down below. And with that, let's go ahead and uh, let's get into the first product, which, you know, just me kind of just meandering into this box here. And I think I'm going to actually start off you know what? I'm going to start here because it's uh, short, sweet, to the point, and it's one I've already talked about, and that is actually this J-Cat foundation, and I threw this in here just in case if uh, if you didn't see it. I did a foundation wrap-up of my, I think it was my 10 most recent tested foundations, which I will link up here, and actually in that video, there's a ton of foundations, just as a side note, if, if you're not, you know, familiar with it. Um, I go through all the price points, so obviously this is drugstore. I think the J-Cat is like $14.99, but there's everything in there from J-Cat to Too Faced, the new It Cosmetics, there's Cure wise. There's Chanel. There's just a ton of options in there. You know, not only price point, but like matte skin, nat natural, you know, more satin finish, or if you like a hydrating foundation, there is so, so much information. So I definitely recommend checking that out. I wanted to go ahead and throw this foundation in this video, even though I lightly talked about it in there. Um, just in case you didn't see it, I just wanted to kind of reiterate one more time that I do not, okay, I do not like this foundation. I think that it is so awful in terms of the texture, like the sticky, just like tuk, 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 tuk. It is so, oh, it is so unbelievable unbelievable how like thick and tacky it feels like you're putting caulk all over your face and you know caulk is one of them words you got to be real careful like caulk you got to make, make sure that you get the l in there uh even though it's it's like slightly silent you just got to make sure otherwise you're getting kind of getting into shady territory um but if, <laughs> wow where did that just go i don't know but just with me with this foundation I, i'm like so offended at the consistency and how ill it is but this foundation because it's so like thick and sticky it has like this weird thing where it it like doubles back like like, 
double-sided tape and sticks to itself. So every single one of your wrinkles just like, it just, it just, oh God, it sticks out. It looks awful. Foundation is just absolutely awful. And I wanted to just, you know, reiterate that really, really briefly. Um, just at the open here that uh, I, I still don't like it. All right, you guys. So going into the next portion here, I do have three mascaras. And of those three mascaras, two of them bring me like physical pain to talk about because I, I loved them so much. Like before I tested them, I just was like dying to get my hands on them. And I, I just, I, it kind of, it just, oh God, it hurts my heart and soul to get into mascaras because I love testing them. It's like one of my favorite, favorite items because I don't wear false lashes as a lot of you guys know. And so I like to have all the drama and all the everything just really going on and just build them up as much as I can. And so you can imagine my upset when one of the mascaras, I was so excited. Okay, the answer's in the name. This is the Uoma Drama Bomb uh, Extreme Volume Nourishing Mascara. And so going into this, okay, not only does the name, I'm just like, oh yes, girl, Drama Bomb, like get me going, get me situated. Okay, like I am ready uh, because I was just, I was ready for a whole moment. Like I'm ready for big over the top, like mm, just give me the volume. I gritted my teeth. Okay, do you see how serious that is? I might have even spit on myself. I can't can't tell anymore. Anyways, you can imagine my surprise when I really get going into this mascara because I, I get very excited, as you can tell. Like, we all know this. Um, and even when this came in, by the way, over on Instagram, I unboxed this mascara and I was just like, ah! like next level. I was ready to go wipe off my full face just to test this out in my office that day. That's how excited I was. And you know, it's kind of one of those moments where the higher the high, the lower the low. Like when you fall, bitch, it hurts. <laughs> and that, that was my experience uh, with this mascara because going into it, um, like just, you know, using it for the first time, really having that first application, I expected based on, you know, obviously the packaging super cute, but based on this wand right here, it has more of like a, like a, a wider hourglass bristle. And typically wands like this work really well for me for building volume and really dragging that product all the way through. But for some reason, okay, for some reason, um, this mascara doesn't do that. It's very, um, very sticky in like an odd way. So it doesn't, um, it doesn't build up on itself and it just kind of clumps together this way, but it never adds any length or any volume like going through the lash. And just overall, like the consistency of this one is very, very confusing for me because again, normally when when I have an off consistency, this wand saves the day. Like every single time I have a mascara with this wand, I can almost always make it work. And with this mascara, the only way I can make it work is actually to layer it with another mascara um, over top of it to try and, and, and dry this formula out, make it a little bit less sticky. And you might be saying to yourself like, well, Paige, doesn't it get like, a, like partial credit just for being like a good little supporting actress, you know, really, really being there for the star mascara, but just like lifting it up, elevating it. Um, and to that, I would reply no, <laughs> because it still isn't good. If anything, I would say that I have tried this with some of my favorite, some of my best mascaras, and it uh, it, it doesn't look good in, in really any application. It kind of brings the good ones down. All right, you guys, so while we're at it, while we're just like breaking our heart and souls open with mascara, why don't we just talk about the other one that actually just took my heart out and just stomped on it on the floor, just put and just spit on it? Um, and that would be the L'Oreal Air Volume Mega Mascara. And oh, <laughs> okay, if you, if you watched my video, I think it was like testing drugstore makeup, I'll link it up here. I believe I talked about this in that video because I was next level excited about this. And when I tell you, like the, the disappointment, okay, because this one, same thing as with the Uoma, has beautiful packaging. It has this beautiful, big old beefy wand with all these bristles. Yes, please sign me up for this wand. Okay, love it. When I applied this one to my lashes, I, I can't think of any other way. Like, yes, I could say it didn't do anything, but when I tell you the term, it didn't do jack shit, like when I, when I tell you that is appropriate for this mascara, I've literally, I've never been more literal, <laughs> word actually being used correctly there, I've never been more literal in my entire life. When I applied this to my lashes, it, it like, in, in every sense of the word, it did nothing. Like, it, did, it didn't do jack shit. It didn't give me any sort of length. It didn't give me definition. It didn't give me, I, I, literally not one thing can I think of that it did. I mean, even down to like the worst of lashes where they're just like, oh, it didn't give me length, but at least it made them a little thicker. No, <laughs> like it did. It was like I spray painted my lashes, just like shh, with like a, like, like, a, like a light little black coat of, of some kind of paint. And this is one of those mascaras too that like just to like double down on the fact that I was so upset, it doesn't even build on itself. Like you don't, you, you, you literally can't gain any traction. It's like I live in the middle of, you know, tundra northern Michigan here. It's soon to be snowing, dear God. And it's just like when you get stuck like on ice or in the snow and you just warm, warm, warm and your, your wheels just keep going and going and you're like, wow, uh, four low isn't helping me. Like I'm not getting out of this damn thing short of some tire chains. And that is this mascara, okay? I feel like that, that analogy went a little far, but you get where I'm going. 
This is one of those mascaras that no matter how much you build it up, no matter what you do with it, you you literally just can't go anywhere. Like it just doesn't ever add. It doesn't ever build on itself um, with any sort of dimension, volume, lengthening, anything. And I mean, like truly, I'm, I'm heartbroken over this. And just like I said with the other one too, I will use this. I will try to, you know, get my life out of it. But just in terms of like disappointment, like bitch, I'm real disappointed uh, because it's, it's, it's very much so a nothing mascara. Like again, slightly better than the other one from Uoma because that one was like heavy and sticky and I didn't like it. Um, but like also awful because you can't do shit with it. So, you know, just keep that in mind. Both of these bro broke my heart and soul. I'm so sad. All right. So next up, we're going to talk about this. This is from Ciate London. This is their Dewy Sticks in Glow. And this is actually one that I got in my BoxyCharm, I believe. Yeah, my BoxyCharm. And I wanted to throw it out here because this is actually a great example of something that just because it doesn't work for me, it very well may work for you because essentially what this is, is it's kind of like a, like a very thin, oily, balmy kind of glow situation. It's not like a highlighter, like a traditional, you know, has shimmer in it, has color to it. This is more so like it's just going to give your skin like that hydrated, glowy look versus, again, adding like a color of a shimmer or something like that. And for me, this product doesn't work because I am someone that has to set my face. And given that I have to set my face, I can't really work with this texture underneath of it. it like it, it's, it's like a weird kind of sticky balm type moment. So you can't even like lightly set over top of it or even put like a real highlight on top of it to stick to it because ultimately this just moves around too much. It's just very, um, very unsettling on my foundation. And so again, even if I wasn't trying to powder it with regular powder, I really can't even top it with a highlight because it's just so, um, so oily, so, um, so fluid on the skin. And for me, I have to have things that really stick down that really adhere. And this just is not one of them. Um, but with that being said, if you are someone that maybe you don't set your face or maybe you like a glowy kind of product like this where it's just going to give you that natural again kind of oily type glow you might really enjoy this it's just that for me it doesn't work but again i can see the benefits of people with like more dry normal or more natural makeup lovers um maybe really enjoying this but for me bitch it was a hot mess all right now moving on from that one. Oh, <laughs> here's one we can talk about this one gets me all kind of pissed off okay this is from essence and normally i love essence like i'm just gonna put this out here into the cosmos i freaking love essence okay i think they are so good, so affordable, and so, so many of their products are point on, but point on, point, point what? <laughs> what the hell are you trying to say? Anyways, they're really good, okay? Let's just wrap that up. Um, but this right here, this is, <laughs> this is not one of them, and this is the Essence Stay 8-Hour Matte Liquid Lipstick. Now, this is not to be confused, not to be confused with the Essence Stay 8-Hour Matte Lip Liner, okay? I absolutely love, love the Stay Put 8-Hour Lip Liners from them. They are so good, um, but these lipsticks, oh, my God. Um, if you want something that will dry, crumble down, and I mean crumble like huh, like the driest, cakiest, little crumbly situation in your life, okay, that is this. Because this product, which by the way, so deceiving. Like, look at this color. It is so beautiful. This is in the shade uh, 07, Let's Chill. And this color is so beautiful. And you apply it, and it is amazing. Then after that amazing, like after you just sit there and you're like, oh, wow. And you're just like really oogling over how good you look. Like, damn, I feel myself. Yes, please. Um, after, after about five minutes, of that, you're going to realize that your lips, they feel like little crusty, busty little raisins, and it is absolutely awful. Um, and it's it's like that with all the colors I bought, so I don't think it's like just a shade thing. Like, this is just this formula, and it is just, oh, <laughs> it is egregious. It's way too drying, way too textural on my skin. And, uh, you know, I've said this before, like, when it comes to a matte liquid lip, I tend to be sensitive, but this for me, like, this pushes the confines of sensitive. This is just, like, too far, okay? This is like, we're going towards the ColourPop and the Kylie Cosmetics end of drying liquid lipsticks. That is where this is at for me, and it is awful, um, especially when you consider, too, like, not only does it dry down. Actually, I would say it's worse than those because not only is it way too dry, but it starts to crumble. Like, after five minutes, if you move your lips, it's like sand, just like, and it just crumbles apart. It's awful, and uh, yeah, I do not recommend this one. This one, mm, no, 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 no. No. All right, guys. So next up, oh, I just took a whiff. This is the only non-makeup item I have, and it's just floating around in here. I got to talk about it. And I, I love its sister so much. Okay, like its big sister, the one that's been around forever. But this Sol de Janeiro Cocoa Cabana Cream, I think for me, the thing about this that I can't stand is that it just smells so artificial, so fake, like so like over the top fake that I just, I can't, I can't mess with it. It kind of reminds me of like the difference. If you've ever eaten like full fat ice cream and you're just like, yeah, mm, give it to me. Moose tracks. Yes, please. Yum, yum, yum. 
don't. And then you try to switch over and you're like, oh, I was naughty. I'm going to eat like, you know, some, some fat free, some diet, something, you know, the, the kind that's full of all the chemicals and, and the sugar free, whatever. And you make that switch and then you're just like, bah, bah, and like you can just, well, there's just so much fake and it's so awful so fast. And that is what this reminds me of. Like the smell of it, for some reason, it's just so pungently awful. And that's, that's the only thing that I can think Oh God, stop doing that. It's the only thing I can think to describe it. It's just really not good, okay? Like, I'm, I'm not gonna sit here and sugarcoat it. It's just not good. It's not the original. It's not that Brazilian bum bum cream. And really, it's not even the same, like, delicious consistency because this stuff, it's, like, thin. Like, it's so, it's almost like a gel cream versus, like, a good thick cream. And I just don't like it. Like, I, I, there's nothing about it. I mean, other than this color container, because I love this. Um, But what's inside, bitch? I cannot. I Oh, I hate it. I've tried to use it so many times and every time it just like the smell like that that fake smell just like gets into my skin and it just like lingers there. Oh, no, absolutely absolutely not. This is such garbage. All right, so next up guys, we're going to talk about this disappearing blush that I have right here. I know what you're thinking. Wow, Paige, there's almost nothing there and that is what happens every time I use this. This is the e.l.f. Monochromatic Multi Stick in the shade Dazzling Peony and I use this I think also in that testing like new drugstore makeup or whatever that I already linked, but but this freaking blush stick, you guys, I absolutely hate it. I hate everything about it. And I just went ahead and built up a, an actual swatch of it so you guys could see what it looks like for real because it literally, like, I can sit here and just blend it away and it just, it, it goes away so quickly. Like, th this is the weirdest blush, the weirdest consistency for me. A bunch of you guys in the comments of that video did say that um, with this one specifically, it could just be the shade because you've tried it or you've seen people try it and it works really well. So for all I know, that is the case. It might just be this color that I picked up. That's totally fair. Uh, but for me, the things that I don't like and the reasons I would be hesitant with this is that the, the texture of this is so light. Like, it's such a light cream to powder finish that as you apply it, you know, you get it on your cheek. Once you go to blend it out, it's quite literally like there's nothing there. But then even after that, like once it's sheared out and, you know, you try to go back in, you try to build it up, my biggest issue is that it builds up because of that weird, like, cream to powder, light, airy situation. It doesn't build up, like, over the cheek as a whole. It gets kind of, like, weird, blotchy, and clumpy, like, on my cheek. And there, there's just nothing about this that works for me. Like, the consistency is not good. And I just, I just don't like it. I think for me, too, you know, just two things. Number one, I want to hear from you guys on this, if you've tried it, if you like it, what shades you like, you know, so on and so forth. I want to hear from you, number one. And number two, I think with this, you, you might really like it if you're someone that prefers more, um, more of like a natural face and you're just looking for quite literally this. Like if you have bare skin and you just want to add like that flush, you could really, really enjoy this because that's quite, quite literally what it gives you. Just a nice all over kind of glisteny flush. You can see it has a little bit of a satin shimmer there to it. Um, and so it is really pretty if you're just wearing, you know, no makeup or a very, very natural kind of face. But for me, girl, that ain't what I'm wearing, okay? I'm over here wearing all kinds, all the makeup I can wear. Oh, which, by the way, side note, I'm actually wearing, if you missed it, um, e.l.f., as, as luck would have it. I'm wearing um, a full face of e.l.f. holiday kits that I went through and tested. Of course, I will link it up here um, if and you missed it. So the irony is not lost on me. But yeah, I just, I don't like this. I think, um, I think unless you're wearing it more naturally, I, I, I don't really see the, um, the longevity in it either as far as uh, the way that it settles into makeup long term. I just, it, it wipes away too easily. It shears out and it's blotchy and I just, I don't like it. All right. So next up, we're going to talk about a product that I did mention briefly in my month end favorites, just, you know, in passing, which I will link up here, but this is the Catrice Goodbye Pores Prime and Fine Poreless Blurring Primer. And this one was actually sent to me from Octoly in like a kit of their best selling products. And for me, the reason, because I, I mentioned it in that video because I was talking about all the stuff that I loved, but this product specifically out of the bundle they sent me, I just did not like, and I've used it several times times. I think I've even used it um, actually before they sent it to me for, you know, for my review. Um, but for me, this primer, it has a really beautiful, like nice, soft consistency. And you guys know I love Catrice. Like I love them so much. But this one for me, it, like it just doesn't have any rigidity. Like it doesn't, um, it, it doesn't really stay on my skin and like, like defend against, <laughs> defend against the hours that I'm wearing it. And I think that that's just because it is so soft and it is so, um, so texturally uh, easy to move around, easy to manipulate. Very similar, actually, um, in consistency to this e.l.f. monochromatic stick I was talking about. It just really doesn't have any grip or any staying power to it. So even though it, it kind of does lightly blur and lightly fill in, um, it just not only does it not stay, but my pores are so intense and so big, so egregious, um, that this really doesn't, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't stand a chance. Like, for me, I really got to get into these pores and, like, really, really fill them in with something that's going to stick around. Don't be wrong. Like I said, it does have a very nice feel to it. Like, the, the 
actual texture is enjoyable. And even putting it on the back of my hand, like I can see that light little pore filling or I'm sorry, blurring type thing that they talk about. But for me, just because I do need such an intense, you know, situation going on here, um, this really doesn't do anything for me. And even when I tried to work it like on the outskirts of my face, like out here, just to kind of lightly um, like blur in those areas, because for me out here so much, I don't have to worry about pores. I thought maybe that would be a better use for it. Like maybe I could use it on the outskirts and then use something else uh, down the center, like in the T-zone. And even for on um, like that portion of the face, it still didn't work because it's just too light. It's too, it's again, it's too movable. It sloughs around easily and it tends to want to move my foundation with it. Like it just doesn't give me that, that long lasting staying gripping thing that I need. All right, guys. So next up, th this last product here, it might be a little bit controversial and that's totally fine, but, uh, cause you, you know, everybody's got some kind of an opinion on it and I get that. Uh, but this last product, okay, we're going to talk, we're going to talk about a little something called lanolin and the fact that it, it is an ingredient, okay, that used to be, to my understanding, it used to be in this Bite Beauty freaking Agave Plus Intensive Lip Mask. Um, and, and now it is not. And let me just tell you, whatever else they put in here, y'all, it sucks. It sucks hard. Um, like not, not in any kind of a fun way, let me tell you. Uh, because to my understanding, let me, let me kind of back up, give you a backstory. So first up, I did a video on Bite Beauty. If you didn't see it, I'll link it up here. I tested out a ton of their products and I have been seeing for like the last two years, I've been seeing this product talked about, raved about, people just love it. Oh my God, it's so great. And that was like the general consensus that it was so, so good. It's to my understanding anyways, that roughly a year ago or so, like within the last year, I'll say, um, it's to my understanding that uh, Bite Beauty made the decision to go vegan. And in going vegan, they removed all of their lanolin from their products, which I, I think for me, uh, just an understanding, you know, based on what I've read on the internet, the lanolin, which is, for those of you that don't know, it's a byproduct. I think it's the, um, like the oil that comes off of sheep's, um, sheep's fur. Like it's, it's what repels the water off of them. I think I, that's like a really, really rough, um, explanation of it, but I, I think that's basically what it is. And, um, it's something that they can't have in their products because again, going vegan, you can't have any animal or animal by byproducts in your makeup. And so uh, again, in choosing that, they had to remove the lanolin. Best part here, let me, I'll show you the best part of this, um, because I think it's really important to mention, um, the best part of this product is right there, okay? It's it's the, it's the shine that you get that looks kind of like a gloss. That's it, okay? That That's all of the intensive anything that you're gonna get because this product, never having tried the original, again, I never got to try the good one, um, but this one right here, it does absolutely nothing for your lips. It doesn't make them more uh, moisturized. It doesn't repair them. It doesn't give them any, any sort at all of like a mask quality. And just overall, like I, I, I can, I can't tell you one good benefit of this other than the fact that it does look, you know, kind of like a glossy shine on your lips. And, and for me, that's what I've been using it as. And this product for me, like it makes me double mad because I would have rather they just pulled it off the shelf. Like, like, Hey, we're not going to get rid of the lanolin because then the product will be useless and dry out your lips page. Um, and just be not good in any way, shape or form. So instead of selling it and, 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 and producing garbage, um, we're just going to pull it. Like I would have just rather you literally not sold it anymore because you had to reformulate. Like you, you had to, you had to put time and money into this and, and who tested it along the way? Like who told you that this was good? Cause they lied, bitch. They lied to you good. And I don't like it. It's just not good. I mean, don't get me wrong. Somebody might like it. Okay. But I'm not going to lie to you and tell you it's good. Cause it's not, it's not good. You don't need it. No, thank you. But all right, you guys with that, that's the end of the video. I hope you liked it. I hope that it was helpful to you. Be sure to leave me all of your thoughts and opinions down in the comments. And like I said, at the start, you can subscribe, turn on your post notifications notifications. Follow me on Instagram. I would really, really appreciate that. And I really appreciate your feedback too on this video. Um, well, actually, I guess it was the last one of these I did because I am going to work on incorporating these more, like hopefully, you know, two to four weeks, something like that, depending on, you know, the makeup I test and whatnot. And I hope that you guys like that. I hope you're cool with it. Again, you can let me know everything down in the comments, but uh, thank you guys also so much for watching. Please don't forget to have an amazing day, night, weekend, whatever it is when you're watching this. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. My hair is getting flat, very flat. I don't know. Coke, I've been sitting here sweating, dying, my, roasting my actual ass off, and I had a Diet Coke right here the whole time. Are you kidding? It's lukewarm and I don't care. Thank you so much.